So I am Dr. Nazim Girabi. Uh, I am a urologist, uh, urologic surgeon, and uh, I work in Algeria. In this uh, systematic review and meta-analysis, we try to focus on uh, these patients and to look for the different treatment strategies to compare between the treatment options uh, because especially for uh, postmenopausal women, we have uh, the so-called genitourinary uh, syndrome, postmenopausal syndrome, uh, characterized with uh, a lot of physical changes in the hormonal statue, in the vulva, in the vagina, in the lower urinary tract, and um, that make uh, even that make the diagnosis and the treatment uh, more difficult in those uh, postmenopausal women. So our study uh, is a meta-analysis, and we look for the literature for uh, up to 2024, and out of 248 record, we, um, we, we choose uh, 35 eligible RCTs for the meta-analysis, and we compared the, differ the different treatments um, available, the, the different treatment option. Uh, it was mainly about estrogens, anticholinergics, and the pelvic floor muscle trainings. That uh, those were were um, the most studied treatment in these patients. The diagnosis of uh, overactive uh, bladder of or huge incontinence in postmenopausal women is well known. We have, of course, a complete medical history, physical examination, and uh, in all, uh, nearly all cases, no imaging or urodynamics is needed uh, at a first line. Um, in in our study, we, we respected those uh, guidelines for diagnosis, and um, our major finding in our studies, the major uh, result were that compared with placebo, uh, the systematic the systemic estrogens were associated with a decreased odds of improving urinary incontinence in postmenopausal women. Then, no significant improvement uh, in urinary symptoms were observed in patients treated with local estrogens, although they showed uh, to be helpful in vaginal symptoms improvement. Another finding, another side of um, our result, we looked at the, the other treatment options like vitamin D, phytoestrogens, and estrogens modulator that are uh, used in some studies. And uh, we found that they were not effective in improving uh, those symptoms of urge incontinence in the postmenopausal woman. And uh, only one RCT in the 35 eligible uh, selected RCTs demonstrated that the oxybutynin was significantly better than the placebo at improving postmenopausal urge incontinence. The anticholinergics plus local estrogens are not more effective than, than anticholinergic alone. And finally, uh, we looked at the physical therapy, which is an interesting treatment option, an interesting treatment uh, uh, strategy. Uh, the, this physical therapy for those patients showed an overall positive outcome uh, on postmenopausal urge incontinence symptoms. Because of the genitourinary uh, syndrome of menopause, uh, we have uh, some physical change in the, um, the postmenopausal woman. We have a hormonal change uh, as well as physical change in vulva and vagina and the lower urinary tract, uh, the lower urinary tract. So in this situation, uh, in our practice, and uh, we, we, we in our practice, we usually refer the patient to the gynecologist 
uh, before to start our treatment, before to start uh, our therapy. And um, this, uh, gyne this gyne gynecologic uh, assessment, uh, of course, will uh, uh, pr include and provide the result of the cervicovaginal smear, which is uh, important and important issue, especially if we are planning to give an hormonal therapy, uh, even uh, uh, local estrogens, whether it's local estrogens or systemic uh, uh, estrogens. And um, in our studies, we mainly focused on uh, urge incontinence. Uh, of course, we can have mixed incontinence. Uh, we can have a lot of symptoms in the same times, but uh, we, focus, we focus on the main symptom, on the major issue. If this major symptom is uh, about urge incontinence, we, we continue so on. In this situation, um, we discuss carefully uh, this hormonal therapy with the gynecologist and, uh, of course, with the patient, and especially in the patient with uh, a history of breast cancer or a breast cancer treatment. Uh, we have to, in first hand, in first side, uh, provide explanation of the side effect of the anticholinergic, which is the most commonly used therapy. And then we talk about the, the, the hormonal therapy, the estrogen uh, posi possible impact for these women. And if there is any contraindication, uh, we change our uh, treatment strategy. And that's the important of the importance of our study that we where we take a look at the all that at all the possibilities at all the treatment strategies uh, if we are in such a case if we can't use a hormonal treatment for example no estrogen if estrogen is contraindicated in any patient we have other possible uh, therapies uh, and the, our meta-analysis show that we need more data uh, for those other options